Hi, my name is Abraham. You're welcome to my channel. It's good to see you again. I want to begin our Python series. I'm uh, going to touch several aspects of Python. Uh, but um, we want to start from the scratch in the sense that we want to teach you um, how to set up your system. Um, assuming that you don't have Python yet in your system. So I want to start from beginner's class and to get to the expert level. And to do that, we'll, like I said, we assume that you don't have Python in your system. So we are going to launch our browser. And when we launch our browser, I will just open a new tab and type Python. Press N. So when I do that, I will see the first link. There's welcome to Python, there's download. I can actually pick from any of them. So let me just do welcome to Python. So if I click on welcome to Python, my business here, you can learn everything you want to learn about Python here. So my business here is just to download. So I go to download and I click on download uh, Python 3.1.3. That's Python 13.0, 3.13.0. So if you have another OS, another operating system, you can see them here. You just download uh, from them. So I'll click on download. Okay. You can see that it has downloaded. So I'll go to, um, I will also, we need another thing, which is uh, VS Code. I'll also open another tab and type Visual Studio Code or VS Code. Is a software from Microsoft that you can use to code a lot of things. So if I click on do that VS code, I'll just click on it and it takes me down to this place and tells you a lot of things about VS code, programming languages that you can uh, code in VS code. It's a code in any language you can speak here. So that's one of the parts of VS code. Or like Python, or like uh, a software like Python. That is um, um, uh, just Python specific, the Python ID for data science and web development. You can decide to use Python, uh, created by JetBrains, uh, that, um, that have an um, intelligence that you can use for Java. But this Python is for uh, Python. It is a very good software, but you're going to use. I love using VS Code because it gives me the flexibility of coding with other languages. So have one and code in many. So the power of extension. So um, I'm going to download um, VS Code uh, by going up and clicking on the download button. So if I click on the download button, it will start downloading. But I already have VS Code, you can see it here, so I will stop it. And then if you, if all these things have been done, you can see it here, you just go to the file. Um, I'll go to the file that I've downloaded, and show in folder. I'll go to your download button. So if it's showing in folder, I'll just uh, click on it and run as administrator. If you are on Mac, you don't need to run don't need to right click and just click on and then it will show this way. But for Windows, you have to run it as an administrator. Click yes and then you wait for it. So there are two things. It says use admin privileges when installing pi.txt. Um, pi you say yes. Then add pi.txt to path. You say yes. That you, you check those two and then click on install. So wait for it to finish installation.
We must do installing different packages here at Bootstrap and uh, add the path has been done successfully, which means the Python has been installed successfully. Now the next thing we are going to install is VS Code. So if I click on VS Code, double click on it, or you can also install as an administrator. But most of the time, we just click on it. Okay, so the antivirus is fighting against it. So that's not a problem, it's from a respected, it's from a, a, a well-known source from Microsoft. So um, it should be accepted. So I will just pause on the, um, the software, the antivirus has finished its scanning. So you can see it is displaying already for us. Um, so that we want to install it. So I say yes. So if I click on yes, Okay. So this is a software from Microsoft. This is the license. You have to read it, and then if you say don't accept, it will not install. If you say accept, it will install. Now you click next. You can create a desktop icon and make sure you check, especially these two last. Even if you don't want this first two. These two last ones must be checked for it to work properly. Create desktop icon and then you click next and everything goes like that. And um, you can say create desktop icon and then you click next. But I already have VS school in my system. So you click next and next and next. Once you do this, the rest is basically next. Let me try and see how far I can go with this. So you can see it will list all the things and then tell you to install. But I don't want to install another version, I rather update my phone. So when you do that, when you click install, everything is just going. Make sure add to path is selected. Even when you are installing the Java, make sure that add to path is selected. It's very, very important. Um, I'll also talk about other stuff as we go on. So I'm just going to cancel, but don't cancel your own. What you're supposed to do is click on install. But I'm going to cancel because I already have it in my system. Okay. Now, to check that these things have been installed in your system, you can come here and say um, um, VS code check whether the VS code in your system. When you click on that, you say VS code, you see it and you click and run. And open, sorry. So if you open VS code for you, if you have done a lot of other stuff, a lot of other work, it will also uh, sometimes open all of them for you. I'm just going to close down all the works that are being opened. And 
Okay. We just put on a search. We are still the new readings for you to see. Uh, we have a new DSO, DSO window. We have done some things. This is how you see it. You want to change the thing? Maybe you have seen other people's DSO that is um, black. You just come to settings. These settings here, where my mouse is. I go to things and go to color thing. And then you can switch uh, the thing back and so that's for the VS code. We'll come back to VS code, so I will just remind this. And the next thing you're going to do is come to your search the window or in your, um, wherever your search is in your Mac. Just type command from PMD. In Mac, you type terminal, or you just launch your terminal. Um, one of the ways to check is you click on the command prompt open it and you just type to check that python is installed you just type python and um python and then you click back okay. you press enter Python have Python shape. So you, need, you see a lot of uh, things here. So um, if I begin to scroll down, so it's actually saying that it's not small letter V, but it's Python V, Python V. We're saying 5.3.1.2.1.2.2. That's the current version that is active. You are the one we installed is 5.1.3. Yes, all of them. I already have a version of Python, but I just want to take you through that process. I'm okay with this 3.1, uh, 3.12.2. Um, I'm going to use that. So this shows that there is Python. But just in case, for those of you that are using Windows, just in case, you are trying, you try this and say Python, uh, the command Python is not recognized. You just come here and type system variable. System, system environment or variable, system environment. System, edit the system environment variable for Windows. You click on it and then you click on system environment, system, system variable. Sorry, click on system variables and then you click on path at the top and say edit. Now you can see that. Okay, let me click on what we are seeing here. You can see that there is a Python um, link here that is showing that there is Python. There's 12, that's 3 3.13, 3.13, 3.13. All of them um, are here. And the, it's indicating that I do have Python 10 here, I do have Python. 11 3.11 so anyone i want to do depending on the projects that i've worked on uh is okay now it might be on the environment variable but not on the system variable so what you do if it's not there you copy it click okay then check the system variable is in the environment is in the user variable for the, this particular user and so you have to also check if it is in 
the system grid. Now, you see that it is not on the system grid. And so I can add it there to get it. And also, if you are saying, even if you don't see it in the user variable for that particular user, you can go to this link, you can locate this link, users, the computer name or the user name, app data, local programs, Python. Once you get to Python, you see the versions that are available, copy that link and then use it here. So assuming I want to add this 3.11, all I need to do is just to say new. So I add new, I click here and paste it. And then I'll click um, OK. I'll click OK and then I'll click apply. So every other one you want to add, that is how you add it. So since we are sure that there is Python here, the next thing you need to do is to go to your VS Code, go to your VS Code that you have just opened, and then click on extension with your internet on, please. Click on extension. When you click on extension, and then you come on this stuff and type five. So if you type Python, you wait for it to load. Now it's going to load a lot of extensions for us. So I'm going to pause the video. It's taking more than necessary for it to load. Let me just pause the video. Once it's load, we'll come back. Okay, so if you are able to do that and you type Python, it will show you a lot of uh, extensions that you can use. This is this is the Microsoft um, product. Uh, the VS Code, I mean the VS Code. Well, it is advisable, or I prefer to use, if you are my student, I prefer to use uh, the, the Python library support. Let me enlarge this place so that library support extension access point for intelligence, balance, debugging, and other. Then also Python debugger extension using debug. Anyone. Uh, but this is the first one. When you click on it, you see about two buttons. Let's click and you can see. You see about two buttons or three buttons. This I've installed it, so you are seeing uninstall here. But if you're just installing for the first time, you see install. So you just click install. While your internet is on, you wait for it to finish installing. Then this one is not necessary, but you can also install. You click on it, the same thing. You see install here. You click on installation. When these things work, and if you see network error, means your network is not good, um, is bad, you have to wait for the right time or locate a better place where you have better network. And then you do that. But if everything works fine, you should be able to run your Python code in the environment. Thank you very much. Let me see your questions in the comment section, and I will attend to them.